Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, and just about the ikros, how would you say these um, add, sort of, what do they add to the ceremony? Because I've heard a lot of people asking this question. Mm -hmm. like, well, I think the, the, the medicine space and working with grandmother is, is guided through the music. The music is a very nice way and, uh, you know, tried and tested way to, to guide a ceremony. It really uh, allows the, sh the shaman or the, the curandero to, 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 to kind of uh, help people you know, flow within this within within the medicine space, and at the same time, through the ikaros, the shamans call in some of their spirit guides and their plant and tree teachers as well. Normally, ikaros. There are some very traditional ikaros that people uh, have uh, sort of channeled and have become like you know anthems, so to speak, yeah. and, and people sing them. But mainly, ikaros are uh, very personal, and it's something that in your training as an ayahuasquero you. When you do the training in the dietas, you work with these different tree and plant spirits, and you spend lots of periods of time, a lot of period of time on your own. And through that process, you actually start to sort of like download or channel these these songs, and, and then they become part of your kind of uh, yeah repertoire of, uh, of tools to, to, to help people. So depending on the situation, you're seeing different ikaros to bring different energies in. And would you when, say when there's also required. a bit of like si silent stuff as well, like more people? Um, incorporating silence into the ceremony or would music play throughout the entire well I think I think it's it's the balance of both I mean when you're in a traditional setting as I said, as I said in the jungle you know they don't people don't have access maybe to instruments or you know recorded music so much so you know silence is so powerful you know like you know, most people have probably heard of silence meditation yeah. and you know just when you're in that place of silence it allows stuff to, to come up so there's that balance you know it's like yeah, if you're so doing a ceremony for four or five hours yeah there's, there's, there's the, you know there'll be like an ikra and some yeah. silence and the, you yeah. know all kind of like you know between between the two and the silence is just, you know it's like the silence gives the beauty to the music you yes. know it's kind of like the balance kind of thing yeah and in comparison to a western ceremony so we kind of got a very clear picture of the mm -hmm. um the ones that you find in the amazon yeah. more traditional mm -hmm. um how would you say the western ones compare to that well there's a you know there's a whole wealth of different ways to do it but i can talk maybe like you know how i would hold space and uh i suppose the main difference is that through i suppose the kind of hippie movement and uh you know life training and coaching and a, a sort of like connection to, to the sort of um, yoga and, and, and mystical arts people in the west bring in those kind of energies as well so for example like a rainbow gathering we would start with a circle and open the circle and give people an option an, an, an opportunity to share their intentions uh, it's working in circle is so so powerful it's it's primordial you know since man first uh, mm. kind of uh, learned to speak and and uh, and uh, and um, live in in community it's something that we've always done we sat around the fire you know, dance, yeah, saying so. Yeah, it goes way, back, way and back. there's also something extremely powerful about that that group energy when you're in a circle. It's almost where you get an opportunity to work with these unseen forces that are so part of who we are. You know, telepathy, and even you know the way we we move our hands. You know, they say they say verbal communication communication only only holds about 30% of our real communication. What we're really looking at is body language and there's also like a whole energetic exchange going on on a telepathic level and, and even yeah. deeper as well. So when you are in circle and people talk, everyone is reflecting energy backwards and forwards with them on a sort of like telepathic level and, right. and they receive that. And you also learn so much from, from listening to someone else share. It's an incredibly powerful part of the experience to do that at the beginning and then to do that at the end of the circle as well before you kind of close yeah, the circle and it's amazing to see the difference as well like you know people sometimes come and maybe they're feeling a little bit kind of self-conscious or or nervous but when people really talk from their heart and share their own personal experience a it powers up the, the you can feel the energy is electric within the group it's like people just really focus and paying attention and then also um yeah, there's this incredible exchange that happens there and, and yeah, I almost say to people that it's as powerful to do the sharing and, and a lot of people say that as well, that they really enjoy the sharing because they, they learn so much from that experience and yeah, when someone talks from their truth, they're sharing a part of their soul and they teach you so much about yourself. It's, it's one of those things I think when you do it, you really understand that it's absolutely amazing. So yeah, the sharing circle at the beginning, then maybe we'll do some smudging, 
you know, a lot of people use Palo Santo, maybe some uh, white sage. Uh, sometimes I talk a little bit about, you know, some some uh, things that you can do within the ceremonial space that's really going to empower up your experience. And um, then, uh, yeah, serve the medicine. And uh, at that point, once we've, we've drunk, we normally like, you know, get the lighting really low or to, or to nothing, even better. And uh, as it's a Western ceremony, normally I offer people, you know, to drink again, you know, especially if they can hold the medicine, then I'm quite happy to serve them as much as, as they can handle kind of thing. Um, now I've developed a system because everyone has different metabolisms where I don't do like a formal second drink. So it's like, you know, three hours in or something like, okay, right, second drink time. I do it much more fluidly because I feel people have, you know, yeah, different, different, different metabolisms and tolerances, yeah. all this kind of stuff. And people are ready and especially experienced people, they know when they're ready, you know, to, to drink again. And we normally go through to the morning time uh, with a mixture of, uh, at the beginning, it's mainly, mainly Icaros. And then as the ceremony uh, uh, moves forward, Play some instruments, flute, uh, jaws, harp, stuff with the shakapa or with shakers. Are um, people also using electronic music in Western ceremonies? I think to a degree. I mean, I do play recorded music sometimes, depending on how many musicians we have and also the vibe. But, you know, I've got some incredible recordings of some, you know, very, very uh, special shamans. So sometimes it's nice to bring that energy into the space. Uh, and also there's some incredible music that's been channeled more recently kind of thing that's kind of like sort of you know modern kind of uh, shamanic uh, journeying music so sometimes it's nice to bring that in I mean live music is amazing of as course, well yeah. so it's you know it's a, it's a balance it, it's like um, yeah each ceremony is completely unique so there's no real set format in that yeah. respect to the music it's like a journey and, and you know and the people there make that journey as well so you know you have to sort of like it's a, it's a feedback process. So do you feel like um, people who are doing ceremonies maybe in a city or something like that, do you think it's still mm -hmm. effective for them to have a ceremony in these places where mostly mm -hmm. they'll be experiencing electronic music or... Well, I mean, uh, I, I mean, you can still sing a chorus in the city yes. or, you know, like I think if you, I mean, I think the most important thing is to have a safe space yep. and, and, uh, and a, you know, relatively quiet space. You know, if you've got someone next door like doing construction and you know, running drills or hammers, yeah, it's course. not going to be so good. But if you could find a, you know, very safe space, like a you know, community centre somewhere or a yoga studio. Yeah, or even you know, there, there are, yeah, there's sanctuaries in the city. I think for a lot of people, you know, making a trip to the countryside or to the Amazon, especially when you've got to be like fasting and, you know, people have jobs and stuff like that, I think it can be very appropriate, especially if we go back to that initial concept, especially when you're first connecting with the medicine, how you're really working in inner space. So as long as you've got a safe, quiet space to work in, when you first connect with the medicine, I wouldn't say it's essential that you need to, you know, some people are like, I'm not gonna drink until I go to Peru and to the Amazon. Yeah, yeah. It's very nice if you can do that. And at the same time, if you find someone who you really resonate with and, and connect with, um, you're gonna get so much from not kind of like putting it off. You know, the medicine is an, is an incredible tool and it, it's like a, you know, like it's, it's, it's a, a practice that you could dedicate your life to. So I kind of did that, you know, I was like, I waited another three years till I could go to South America to drink. And then when I got there and drank, I was like, oh my God, why didn't I do this three years ago? Because yes, the amount of yeah. learning, teaching, healing, nurturing that I could have given myself in that time would have far outweighed the fact that I'd gone you know, all the way to, to, the, to the jungle to drink. Kind yeah, of thing. so it's kind of lingo yeah. of attachment to um, any particular setting. Yeah. And yeah. what you're sort of saying is that it's valuable to, to do it in many different types of settings. Yeah. Um, I, this I, kind of new modern yeah. approach to shamanism. Yeah, I think it mainly it's the fact of like, if you're working with the medicine, you should be working in inner space. And from that place of inner space, you know, the universe is holographic. So if the medicine wants to show you the spirits of the forest, you will go there or they will come to you. You know, it's like, you, you know, you are the center of the universe. Yes. So when you're, especially when you're in that inner space, as I said, there are different kinds of ceremonies where people are in a more kind of like visual celebratory kind of situation. But when you're working in inner space, as long as it's quiet and it's the space is well held, if you know, you've got someone there who can keep it, keep that as, you know, the energy, integ you know, the integrity of the energy in that space. I don't really think it matters where, I mean, you are of course going to get slightly different energies in the city, but that's where, you know, a good uh, space holder comes in because they can create, you know, a safe energetic grid within which you can work.